Hello everybody, welcome back for another video, hope you're all doing well and that you're all having an incredible day. Welcome back to another News I Missed, where I go over News I Missed. Dan Moorhead, chief executive of a crypto investment firm and hedge fund Pantera Capital, says leading digital assets like Bitcoin, Ethereum, and XRP will challenge the supremacy of the U.S. dollar in the long run. In the latest episode of Real Vision Finance with macro investor Raul Pal, Moorhead describes the current economic backdrop that he believes may spell the beginning of the end of the U.S. dollar's dominance. He said in the fiscal policy, we've seen a 10% of GB, GBP, GDP stimulus signed days before a new stimulus plan has been talked about. There are just numbers that are literally off the charts. I think it is almost certain that the U.S. is going to exit this crisis with more than debt after the battle against the Great Depression or World War II. I listened to a podcast, haven't said that in a while, talking about the actual situation that's going on and who will come out as the winners of this entire economic stimuli financial crisis. Uh, and it was one country, a country who people have been talking about would be or become more of a world leader uh, over the last 20 years. Only one country comes to mind, and they said that they have positioned themselves in such a position that they're going to do incredibly well. They expect that many other countries are going to pretend that things are okay, but as time ends up going on, we will slowly understand the exact extent of what all this money printing has done. And also... Um, said country's creation of the digital version of their currency will also lead them into a new, listen, like, listen this is, this is what this, uh, analyst said on the podcast, but they were saying that it's the actual movement to a completely digital economy, the cloud movement of everything that they're also trying to create around them, if you will, that would allow them to usher in a brand new age of strongness. Yeah, Moorhead points out that the change from the dollar to a new reserve currency will happen over the course of many years. He said it's a fact of the world that the dollar is the reserve currency now. I, I didn't know that. Wow. That's changed every 80 or 100 years over the last six centuries. I do think in the long run, and this is decades, cryptocurrencies will become reserve currencies, whether it's Bitcoin or Ethereum or Ripple. Ultimately, some of those will be reserve currencies, but governments are very slow to change. And so I think that's a 10 to 20 year, very slow progression. I think it'll happen a bit quicker than that. I think the changing point in my eyes has always been that $50,000 Bitcoin. 50,000, the number itself is insignificant, but it slides us to a $1 trillion Bitcoin market cap. If we've seen interest by governments already, one can only assume that when Bitcoin's complete value as a whole is over a trillion, and that dwarfs the GDP of many countries, this is when they'll start to really pick up. Uh, especially if we end up getting those really weird numbers from all the analysts who are saying that over the next 10 years or whatever amount of years that we will see a, um, whatchamacallit, a, um, a $500,000 Bitcoin, that's $10 trillion. At that point, that becomes incredibly stable, and at that point, you have to kind of really look deep and go, well, the last 15 times that we've tried to make... Um, any type of a fiat currency and it keeps failing. Maybe we should choose that thing. So maybe maybe even 10 isn't isn't that far off, but I'm once we get to that $50,000 Bitcoin, that'll start turning a lot of heads. The price will continue to go up because everybody wants to make more as the price is going up. So yeah. When asked which cryptocurrencies have staying power, the crypto investment firm executive says that only a handful of tokens will make the cut. He said, I think there's going to be a single digit of very important blockchains. It's already starting to shape up where you're seeing Bitcoin not really changed very much, but being really good at storing wealth. You see Ethereum as being really dynamic and they've already got Ethereum 2.0, not quite, but I mean, it's coming. Then Ripple's taken an enterprise SAAS version of this and trying to work with all the banks. I think there's space for eight to 10 of those use cases in the long, long run, I wholeheartedly agree of all the cryptocurrencies that we see right now, we are probably, I give it seven coins. And that's a rough seven. That's like a really rough seven. I think a lot of coins will do exceptionally well 
in either the next the next or the next after that bull run. I think they're going to do incredibly well. A lot of the coins that we saw sitting before in 2017 at one cent that went up to around 38 cents. That may not sound like a lot cent wise, but that's still a 38 times increase from where they were. And even now, a lot of the blockchains that I may myself not really care about, I think they're going to do incredibly well. Even the coins, the ones again that I don't care about, uh, when there's a bull run and, and Bitcoin decides to move itself on up, every other coin will also benefit. But remember how different the market is from 2017, and I kept on saying it's going to come down to actual use cases. It's one thing to uh, do really well during a bull run, but when that bull run is over and those other coins collapse and people continue to still use XRP or Ether or Bitcoin uh, on a daily basis for computer programming, for this, for that, for locking up stuff, for this and banks, that's going to be the um, true show of strength. If you can kind of say it that way. I mean, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to say true uh, sh uh, Wow. <laughs> Said it once, couldn't say it again. To show a true show of strength. But I think, in my mind, I think these three have the best bet as far as everything bitcoin is bitcoin no 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 introduction needed ethereum sticks out very heavily because russia brazil this country that country keep building stuff on top of ethereum and you would have to wonder why a country would not just build their own blockchain but they're building on top of ethereum instead that kind of leads me to go uh, not even follow the money follow the country and as far as xrp uh, we know that they have partnered with 300 plus banks. They're partnered with every bank in India and multiple other places around the world. And also, um, for those of you who hate XRP and don't really know about it, um, even if they're not using XRP itself behind the scenes, this is planned to actually be used. So all of the remittances will eventually run through XRP, even if a company itself has not chosen to use it. So long run. These three are definitely um, top bet. I won't say what the other ones are. Uh, and even, and, I mean, it's a, it's a hard seven. Like, it's like a really, like, I, I'm, I'm trying to pick apples, but some of the apples look kind of rotten. And I'm like, okay, I can cut off part of you to put into a pie. Like, it's, it's, it's that. Um, but I think as time go goes on, uh, we will see new coins emerge that I think people just won't pay attention to. They'll kind of pop up. People will go, oh, that's kind of cool. And then eventually, five years down the line, they'll be like the, um, the word's not silver fox. What's the word? It's like that, uh, oh, I wish I had seen that. Oh, my gosh, look how powerful and rich Apple is. I wish I had gotten it early. Those kind of things will been, uh, begin to emerge. But anyway, yeah, I, I think these three will, obviously, you've, you've, you've seen how time has gone on. Uh, and even more so, it's nice to um, kind of have my theory be proven in a way. I, I made sure to focus for a while just on these three, not even just talking about them, but as far as like investing, if you will. And these three continue to be the forefront runners at the front of the pact when it comes to everything. But you never know. That could all change, uh, especially now. We do have a lot of um, upgrades and stuff coming out from other coins. I'm still I'm I'm still looking to see if uh, Cardano could uh, push into the top five or if not top three. Anyway, yeah, we, we, we've been getting an enormous amount of. Um, it's not even bullish news at this point. I think the uh, the recession that we are currently in, which could potentially maybe who knows, become a depression question mark in the air. No one knows um, is leading a lot of people to kind of come forward and talk about, you know, it's one thing to say, oh, yeah, I think one day. Uh, Bitcoin could eventually hit this price, but kind of uh, this was has, has been the catalyst for a lot of this uh, movement forward as we are openly seeing. It's one thing to speculate that governments are printing money and then when they openly say, hey, yeah, we got we got to print 7.5 trillion. That is something else entirely different. Oh, yeah. Let's move on. In news I, 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 I could not get away from, I, it was impossible to find any way around this. In a recent appearance on Anthony Pompliano's The Pomp podcast, billionaire investor and owner of the NBA Dallas Mavericks, his name is Mark Cuban, discussed his qualms with Bitcoin. Despite arguing that Bitcoin is hampered by a lack of understanding, among the general public and poor fungibility for goods without fiat conversion, Cuban offers that Bitcoin may find success if economic crises accelerate and everything goes into the crapper. When asked 
what it would take to change his position or of skepticism regarding Bitcoin. Cuban stated, it would have to be so easy to use. It's a no brainer. It'd have to be completely friction free and understandable by everybody first. And then you can say it's an alternative to gold as a store of value. I'm listen, even just logically right now, just because, okay. Just because you yourself don't know how to use it doesn't mean that it couldn't already be proposed as a new store of value as opposed to gold. Um, if you're here listening to and or watching this, you've probably transferred crypto before. Um, it may have seemed difficult in the beginning, but now it's not now. You understand, much like if you are doing a bank transfer and you have to, tr you know, copy and paste that long string of letters and numbers and stuff like that and then put it into the other thing and then you enter a number and you click enter that's how the transfer occurs same exact thing with cryptocurrencies it's not that difficult the idea is, is that one of the arguments against cryptocurrencies is that it needs to be incredibly easy as simple as being able to tap a card swipe a card but guess what? We have tons of those already. We have tons of uh, Binance cards and Coinbase cards and card cards. Uh, so that entire argument completely goes out the window. It's just that I think that the, the discussion has been for a while and has been through the ages. Um, Bitcoin is for criminals. Oh, criminals aren't using it? Well, Bitcoin's for um, other people doing illegal things. Oh, oh, they're also not using it. They're using Monero, Dash, and Zcash. Well, uh, Bitcoin's not fast enough. Oh, you have other things that are going to be updated to make Bitcoin faster and or just do other transactions, especially when it comes to validating them. Well, uh, Bitcoin, it's always, th th there's always something. Like logically, the way that Bitcoin works now, it could be a complete, like think of this logically. We could, if we wanted to, put all the money that's in gold into Bitcoin. Bitcoin wouldn't collapse. Bitcoin wouldn't stop working. It would still have the three to five transactions per second. But if you look at it in a way of you imagine filling a bag with gold and trying to travel with it on a five hour flight, the same amount in Bitcoin, though it's three to five transactions per second, would still get to that other country probably a lot quicker and a lot lighter than that gold. He said you're going to have to make it friction-free so grandma can do it. Adding that the fact that we are arguing so much about it and you have so many stands about Bitcoin just proves the point. That is difficult, but it's not difficult. It's not. Like, if you had been here in 2012, I would have been like, okay. The, 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 the downloading of the wallet, the having to wait for the entire wallet to sync, um, having to add your own, the same exact thing in 2015 and 16 and 17 with Ethereum, having to sometimes add in how much gas you wanted to use or having to add in your own transaction fee when you were sending Bitcoin to make sure that it was actually not accepted by the network, but that the transaction wouldn't take 28 days as other transactions were going ahead of you because people knew to simply put 25 cents as opposed to your one cent. That makes it, that's, that, that's something entirely different. However, that is all a thing of the past. So I think this person um, is... I think Mark Cuban is definitely probably around 2013, 2014 when it comes to the actual cryptocurrency space. Like, it's not difficult. Even, even you know, I don't like Coinbase, but Coinbase makes it so simple. So simple, As, especially if you have like a card linked to it. You just click the number and then click buy. Bam, you bought it. That's not difficult, especially once they end up having, I assume this is going to be a thing, some type of a, a Bitcoin complete passive income through Coinbase. They will do everything for you, regardless of the 25% fee, but that's something completely different. Cuban argued that Bitcoin comprises a cumbersome means of exchange through lacking fungibility for goods and services without converting into fiat currencies. He said right now, you still have to convert it for anything that you want. That's a lie. He stated, adding, as long as you have to convert it, you are still dependent on fiat no matter what you say. However, uh, the point is, you can Google this right now. Take out your phone, your pen. You can't use a pen for the internet. Take out something that gets you to the internet and type in um, using Bitcoin online, how to use Bitcoin online, buying things with Bitcoin, what can you buy with Bitcoin? You'll find a whole bunch of search results. There are hundreds of websites around the entire planet that allow you to pay completely in cryptocurrencies. Isn't it? and, and it's no longer just Bitcoin. They usually allow like the top 10, top 15, top 20, depending on which website that you're on. You can buy everything 
with Bitcoin. You can buy everything with cryptocurrencies now. You can buy computers, you can buy flights, you can buy clothing, you can buy shoes, you can buy food. There are tons of restaurants that also accept it. So like I said, I, I, I feel like he's in a bit of a time warp. But I mean, also, once again, the, the discussion comes up. He doesn't need Bitcoin. He doesn't need cryptocurrencies. He's already super rich. So the idea of this other new thing that doesn't really make sense for him, of course, he doesn't need it or have to use it or have to want to have it because it means nothing to him. He already owns billions of things that have made him as rich as he, as he uh, currently is. So... um. Yeah, that's once again, that's a lie. Like you can completely, I, once again, I know people who get paid in Bitcoin. They do jobs online. They tell their jobs, hey, pay me in crypto. I also know the people who get paid in Tether. You can get paid completely in crypto, go outside with your phone or have a Coinbase card, tap your card because it's a debit card and pay through crypto completely. There are websites you can completely go on. Even if you have to do the whole string of numbers and letters, you can pay for everything in crypto. He said, I can trade bananas easier as a commodity than I can trade Bitcoin, which is, all dude. He said, and I can still eat the banana before it goes bad, even though, you know, argument Bitcoin doesn't go bad, and get all my potassium for my workout. This gets, mm, Cuban recounts briefly supporting payments in Bitcoin. And this is, this is the best part to me. Cuban recounts briefly supporting payments in Bitcoin on the Mavericks online store four years ago, stating no one bought anything. After reintroducing support for merch and ticket purchases in Bitcoin in August 2019, Cuban estimates that the payment method has bought in around $130 worth of Bitcoin, adding, that's all the Bitcoin that I own right now. Bam. Surprise. That's the news. The news was that Mark Cuban, after all this time of saying that he hated cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin, that he owns Bitcoin. Not even joking. You can find, type in Mark Cuban Bitcoin. You will, nope, that's not it. You will, <laughs> you will drown in the news of Mark Cuban owning Bitcoin. That, that, that was it. That was the whole news. Um, also that for some reason he doesn't understand how to use crypto. Um, I, I give him eight years, eight years. Yeah. Cause I, I assume he's still around 2012. So by 2028, expect him to, um, go over news stories from now. Uh, wouldn't it be really funny if in 2028, Mark Cuban's like, yeah, we got Ethereum 2.0 coming. Bitcoin has a halving in a couple days. He seems a little behind, but once again, Bitcoin's not for him. Um, it will be fascinating. However, to see, I give this three, two years, two years, three years, three years, two and a half years. Somewhere around there. If Bitcoin ends up hitting 50,000 to 100,000, don't be surprised if there's a cryptocurrency convention and Mark Cuban is sitting there, I don't care if it's on the left or the right, and he talks about the benefits of Bitcoin and how great it's been, and also that surprise he might have been holding since around 2015, 2016. This, is, this would not be the first time that we've had someone very rich who has spoken down to or about cryptocurrencies and then later on revealed that he owned, and I don't, and I don't even take the, the, the him owning $130. I'll put it to you this way. If you are fairly well off and you are able to allocate portions of your richness into other things that could potentially be something big down the line, you do it. I'm not talking about him putting a 1% a stake in Bitcoin. I'm not even talking of a, I, like, I could legitimately see him being like, yeah, throw in, throw in 50,000 into it. Let's see what happens. That, that money means nothing to him. Same exact thing with um, the guy with the face, um, Amazon guy, Jeff Bezos. If you, you, you want to see something crazy, me and my friend freaked out a couple of weeks ago. If you Google, how much does Jeff Bezos make a minute? Prepare to feel terrible for the rest of your life. He makes, he makes so much money in, I mean, you can't even imagine how much he makes in 10 seconds. If, if, he, if he waited an entire 10 minutes, he could buy up a huge swath of Bitcoin without even really caring. Anyway, I assume a lot of these billionaires own Bitcoin regardless of if they say it or not. Um, but yeah, I'm not joking. That was the news. This was everywhere. All over the place. Couldn't get away from it. Mark Cuban owns some Bitcoin and still doesn't understand how to use it. Even though it's hyper simple right now. Yeah.
let's move on. Next up, ethereumprice.org released a new UI calculator tool today, okay, to calculate Ethereum staking rewards after the network moves to Ethereum 2.0 later this year. The tool provides a glimpse into how much one might be able to earn just by letting tokens sit in stake. That, 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 that's not a sentence. When Ethereum upgrades to its next iteration. To that end, users can adjust a number of network settings that have a large effect on how the reward is calculated. For example, changing the amount of all ETH in circulation being staked to from 1% to 10% means the difference between earning 5% or 15% each year on stake. 15% would be... N that's, 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 that's a lot. That's a lot of... That's a lot. I'm expecting... I remember when EOS first started their entire staking thing. I think it took, was it a week, 10 days, 15 days for I think more than 50% of all the EOS to be staked. I'm assuming we are going to see crazy numbers as far as the entirety of the amount of ether in circulation that are going to be staked on the network. I think it'll be far beyond actual 10%. Uh, it's going to at least be 35% being staked on them at least, at least, at least. At least, at least. The tool uses data from the Brooklyn-based Ethereum incubator Consensus. The calculator was deployed using an open source Google sheet created by Colin Myers at Consensus Codify. Decrypt is funded by... but uh, The tool calculates 10 years of Ether staked. ETH awarded each year and cumulative return on investment over time. Users are able to choose from a number of fiat currencies to display the value of their Ether stake, including US dollars, euros, Great British pounds, Japanese yens, and others. There's a little chart right there. The calculator is in public beta, and the interface is being billed as more of an educational device than a means of practical calculation. However, it gives an idea of how much staking Ether will become an important part of the ecosystem as the Ethereum 2.0 launch approaches. This is going to be quite fascinating. And it's it's a shame that every single time that I talk about Ethereum 2.0, I have to go, let's hope that it happens because this is probably going to be incredibly monumental depending on how you want to look at it. However, the I, I know that a huge amount of Ether is going to end up being staked. I can just feel it in my bones. Uh, this also ties directly next into the other one right here. Yep. Ethereum has seen a significant uptick in, pri in, pri in price lately. As the market went on its recovery path at the time of writing, Ethereum was valued at 195 I think we just tried to go over $200 per Ether. It was like a little movement down. However, we did, I, I think we hit like 199.50. like not even joking, it was like there. Meaning the coin registered year-to-date gains of over 50%. And this increasing trend is the largest in the largest altcoins price has been in tandem with the number of active addresses, indicating a number of the market participants in the eco Ether ecosystem as the blockchain's long-awaited upgrade and switch to proof of stake begins with Ethereum 2.0. Additionally, the number of addresses holding 32 Ether or above has also been on the rise according to the latest glass node chart. Currently, there are 111 six. Wait, no. Wow, what's wrong with me? One, 111 six. For those of you not looking at the screen, the number is 116,000. 111 six. 116,350. I wonder where that came from. 111 six. 116,351 Ethereum addresses that hold 32 Ether or more meaning a surge of roughly 14% within the last year. There's the chart right there. You probably you should know why the 32 is important. I have a couple of friends who are also on that train, and I assume as we get closer to it, this is probably the reason why, logically, Ethereum has been rising. I was going to say may have been rising. Has been rising in price over the last uh, couple of weeks. I think everyone, a lot of people, are trying to get to that 32 Ether number. Uh, it is going to become more difficult as the price continues rising, especially as, I mean, the price has done fairly well since the beginning of this year. I think the lowest we went was nine, was it 90 something dollars or was it like 101? This was a couple of months ago. Uh, done fairly well. Uh, it's the same exact thing that we saw before with the amount of addresses who were trying to accumulate over one Bitcoin. It's quite, it's quite fascinating. Like think of... Think of if this all works out. Think of if, you know, in, in, in about 10 years, all these coins 
or a couple of the coins end up doing in incredibly well. Like how interesting people's wallets will look if they have exactly a Bitcoin and are holding those 32 Ether. Quite fascinating. I like the idea of the, rather, I like the news story of the actual addresses holding 32 or more Ether uh, continuing to rise because that's going to be a very big thing. Being able to stake on your own and not being reliant on an actual mining pool is going to be insane. Anyway, yeah, that's the uh, Ethereum 2.0 news every day. It, it, it's kind of like becoming the new Binance, if you will. Uh, every day, Ethereum's in the news. It has to do with the 2.0, the staking, and now we're getting like staking reward calculators. Oh boy, it just has to all go off. That's the, that's the major thing. It just has to happen. But there's a lot of interest, if you will. And yeah, let's move on. Next up, cryptocurrency exchange Poloniex experienced unscheduled downtime on the 24th of April before resuming trading for all pairs except for Gren to BTC. Poloniex announced in a tweet sent that the exchange had to halt its activity due to an unexpected issue. Interestingly, the exchange warns users that it does not intend to resume the trading of Gren to Bitcoin, which is apparently the root of the malfunction. Poloniex resumed activity before going into maintenance mode. About an hour later, once it resumed trading for good, its announcement read, all markets except for Grin to BTC are now re-enabled for full trading. Our initial maintenance was related to our Grin BTC maintenance earlier today. Following that, we began experiencing issues with one of our service providers. We will provide updates once everything is resolved. Some Twitter users asked Poloniex, how they can withdraw their Grin holdings from the platform, apparently showing fear that the exchange's Grin wallet was compromised. Still, a cyber criminal emptying the exchange's Grin wallet appears unlikely if one considers that only the Grin to BTC trading pair was suspended while Grin USDT trades continued as usual. Yeah, yeah, it just has to do, for those of you, I mean, just for uh, to ease any confusion, it has to do with the actual mechanism for this trading pair. Like, Grin or BTC weren't compromised. It just has to do with the actual metrics between these two coins. Like, most cryptocurrency exchanges have like tons of wallets actually offline so the idea that it would be compromised or i mean this is once again this is why you have to do research like you have to learn more about the space because fear sets in very very quick if you hear that a crypto exchange is having problem with their maintenance through these two pairs people think that their money is at stake when it's not it's just the actual trading pairs between these two especially if it's still going through tether it's fine uh the news being uh, this is still a discussion, like days later, as is this news I missed. Um, there was also a, I don't know if it was a scheduled or an unscheduled um, maintenance thing happening on Binance. And people also, people, people take to the streets way too quick. Uh, there was so much chatter on the internet about like, uh, not fraud, but like money being stolen and stuff like that. You have to understand, like these are... The, these websites have been around for around two to three years. They, they have an enormous amount of weight being put on them at all times. Even when the market is low like it is now, there's tons of usage on these platforms all the time. So whenever there's a spike in price or whenever they're doing an upgrade, things may go wrong. Things may get shut down. Things may take a bit of time to kind of open back up. Uh, yeah, I just thought I'd also talk about that as well because... Every single time that a, a crypt, I mean, listen, every time that any crypto exchange goes down for maintenance, for some reason, this comment section and Twitter and Reddit completely explode talking about, um, yeah, I'm expecting them not to come back. My friend told me he couldn't get his money out and it's like, stop trying to spread fear. What's the, what's the, uh, what's the obsession with the trying to spread panic so that other people are also panicked when all these things are happening anyway? Yeah, so just a grin to Bitcoin trading pair. If you feel scared, take your grin or your Bitcoin off of exchanges in general. We've had this discussion before. Um, you are able to do so. You are able to get a ledger and have it on said ledger or download an app and have it on that app if you feel that scared every time that happens. So, yeah, that's that news. Yeah. Yeah. And to finish things off, also, I, I, was, I was incapable of getting away from this as well. eBang, not joking, it says E-B-A-N-G. eBang International 
One of the world's largest Bitcoin mining machine manufacturers has just recently filed for an IPO, that is an initial public offering, in the United States. eBang is looking to raise $100 million through the offering, according to an F1 form filed with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission on Friday. The company looks to offload Class A shares that will have a face value of 0 0.0001 cent per share that's not even a, a dollar that's a it's a tenth of a tenth of a of, of a cent china-based ebang intends to list its shares either on the new york stock exchange or the nasdaq under the symbol ebon that is e-b-o-n per the f1 form hong kong based amtd global markets limited and u.s based loop capital markets llc are listed as joint underwriters for ebang's ipo ebang is one of the leading asic chip designers and made 82% of its 2019 revenue on designing these chips for Bitcoin mining. Wow. I, cool. This was everywhere for some reason. I, I get the significance of it, but there are tons of companies. There are tons of cryptocurrency manufacturers, tons of cryptocurrency, this and that, who are also looking to go live and or public, uh, on the NASDAQ or the New York stock exchange or the S and P no, not, not, not the S and P 500. Uh, just somewhere on a stock exchange. It's going to happen. They're going to continue to try and do so. Um, I wish them the best of luck in what they're trying to accomplish. But I mean everywhere. Everywhere. Every, which is really weird because I was talking about that before as well. If there's ever news about a country trying to use Bitcoin. If there's ever news about uh, this happening or this upgrade or this so and so. Maybe you can find it in about one or two different websites. But for some reason, whenever there's news like Mark Cuban owns $130 worth of Bitcoin or there's a chip manufacturer who's trying to get listed on an IPO, that news is on every website. I think the priorities are a bit mixed up. However, yeah, that's that news. Um, there's a reason once again why it's called News I Missed because it's the, it's the news the news I missed. I do hope you all enjoyed. I do hope that you all are having, I, I, yeah, whatever. I hope you all are having a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching and or listening. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.